Okay, hi everyone. Uh, okay, so my name is Pratyaksh Rastogi and I welcome you all to Altidemi Neat. How are you all doing? Uh, I welcome you all guys and I'm really glad to see you in my live webinar. This is Pratyaksh Rastogi and I am a biology faculty and I deal with both that is zoology and botany. Okay, so I can see that, uh, you know, some viewers are joined, some uh, students are joining in. So, you know, just wait, let's wait for 10 seconds more. Let's uh, wait for the other people to join as well. So guys, I hope that you all are safe and fine and you are at your homes. So how are you all? I just want to know the names of you all. So can you just drop your names? Can you just say hi uh, in the chat box? So let's make the session interactive. Okay. So, yeah. And just want to make sure, uh, is my video and my audio uh, is clear to you guys? Is there, if there is any glitch, please do let me know in the chat box so that I can correct that out. Okay. So, hi everyone. Okay. I can see that one viewer has joined in. Okay. Okay. So, Priyanshi has sent an emoji in the chat box. And uh, yeah. So, now the live session has started. So, let's begin. My name is Pratyaksha Stogi and yeah, so okay, first of all, my main question is to you guys, what's your, pre how is your preparation going on? Because see, uh, your NEET exam can, you know, it may happen into the month of May or June for sure, right? Uh, based on the COVID-19 uh, guidelines and all. So how you are all, like, are you all on track with your studies? Uh, you know, uh, like you must have completed at least like 70 to 80 percent of the syllabus of your all the three subjects right whether it be it a biology chemistry or physics so if not then guys don't worry i know that you know even students uh, you know sometimes they get uh, you know tricked out with some chapters so not an issue just be relaxed stay focused and be calm and you know just concentrate into your studies okay you still have uh, you still have 3 to 4 months to go you can go through our videos we post our videos you know like uh, every week and you can just go through them and we basically create a videos, you know, uh, like according to the topics, the most crucial, the most important topics, which are for NEET exam. We just, you know, uh, prepare those topics for you. And, you know, we post those uh, videos on our YouTube channel so you can access them at any time. Okay. Second thing, uh, you know, like I said, just stay focused. Don't worry. Okay. You will be able to just make it through. And uh, yeah, my best wishes to you all. Okay. So let's start. Okay, so this is my introduction, guys. Uh, my name is Pratyaksh Rastogi, and I have been uh, with Alter, Alter Demi, and I've been teaching for NEET Biology. And I am a physiotherapist by my profession, and I am a teacher by choice. I really like biology when I was preparing for NEET, and yes, that's the uh, you know that's why I got so much interested into teaching biology as well. So yeah, okay. And right now I'm doing some researches in sports science related to human participation in your sports you know uh, different different uh, like uh, you know like you can say the participation of your soft tissue soft tissue such as ligaments tendons muscle you know and whatever the associated structures we have so the participation of them into your sports so basically i'm doing some research like how a structure performs okay so moving ahead guys so i have prepared one topic for you all but before that let me just clear you guys about, you know, uh, what today's class is all about. So first of all, I, want, I, would like to, I would like to introduce, you know, about Altademy to you guys so that you can, better be you can better understand what Altademy is. So basically, see, we are, you know, we are an online educational institution or a platform where, you know, our classes, we, you know, provide you the classes and other classes look like this, which are showing on, our, uh, on my slide. First of all, you know, we provide you the theory that is right now I'm taking an online webinar for you guys and I hope that you will get something from this webinar. Just give your feedback into the chat box so that uh, at the end I'll go through this and I'll make improvements in myself for the next time. Okay, so the same way I'll have prepared the theory for you. I'll explain everything to you, every concept of the chapter. Next, next thing, we also provide the study material in the form of PDFs. Okay. So you can easily access those PDFs and you can just go through the study material what we prepare. We prepare both that is the basic and the advanced. Okay, advanced means like some questions or some concepts are there which are not present in your NCERT. 
right? So we also, you know, uh, like include that knowledge into our PDFs and we provide to you guys. So I hope you will get something from them as well. Then, yeah, so online webinars, so similar way you have the webinars for biology, physics and chemistry, both all the three. We, uh, you know, at the end, when everything is completed, we provide you the homeworks as well. Homework is in the form of a self-assessment test, okay, where you can just attempt the questions and you can just self-evaluate yourself, like which question you did wrong and what the concept was, like you need to revise that concept, right? So either you can just go through our video once again, you can go through the study material, you can go through the reference books, you know, there are so many reference books available in the market. Uh, you know, name, namely Dinesh, you can prefer, you can prefer, you know, different, different question banks uh, from the previous years. But yes, one advice I would like to give you all is, please prefer NCERT, please, you know, uh, like take NCERT on your fingertips, okay? That's the only thing which is going to be helping you out, you know, in order to clear uh, 70 to 80% portion of your NEET exam, okay? And at last, we will check your homework. Like, you know, we basically, uh, what we do is we, uh, you know, uh, provide you, you know, uh, uh, you know, every discussion of the self-assessment in a video form so that you'll be better be able to self-evaluate yourself and you will understand what could be the answer and what could be the concept behind that answer. Okay. So these are the basic, you know, uh, information about our classes. So yes, you can just go through them. Next we have, okay. So guys, this, these are the subscription plans, what we have for you all. These are all very economic friendly, okay? So basically, uh, you know, you will not have to just spend, you know, a thousands of rupees or, you know, lakhs of rupees just, you know, for a one year in order to complete your NEET and GE slavers. These are very economic friendly. You can just visit our website, which is altademy.com. You can get every piece of information from there, okay? Altademy.online. Also, you can join our Telegram channel. We also have a WhatsApp group everything is available for you all so that you can get the information about these plans so we have three types of plans the first will be light second is smart and the last one is proficient okay so these are the basic features you are able to uh, avail you know for you all in light uh, subscription plan we provide you interactive live classes like right now i'm taking a webinar for you all i'm interacting to you guys Secondly, we have structured courses in the, in the form of PDFs. I told you we have live tests and we have physical notes to give you all. Okay. In smart plan, what we have is we provide you a one or one, one on one additional mentorship. We have doubt life solving, you know, classes for you all where whatever doubts you have related to any chapter, especially in biology, you can ask me at any time through our portals. Okay. Then we have mock test regularly. Yes, we will, you know, design the examination. We'll design the test based on the NEET and we will, you know, so that you will be able to fam get familiar with that NEET pattern because, uh, you know, in news it's coming that NEET pattern will still be changed this year as well. Okay. So you better be aware with the news related to the examination, the pattern so that you can better, uh, famil you know, familiarize yourself with that. Then in proficient plan, the, you know, the advanced benefit, what you are getting is additional special course. Okay. So whatever additional information will be there for your NEET and for your JEE examination, you will get all the information from your mentors. Okay. So you can just make up your mind according to you, whatever plan suits you, whatever plan you think that will help you in, to crack your NEET examination, you can just go through that. Okay. So I can see that two viewers have joined in. So guys, I cannot see your names and all. So can you please post your names, say hi, so that I can interact with you. Okay. So uh, for today, I've selected one topic for you, which is biotechnology and its applications. Okay. Basically, it's a chapter of your class 12th. Okay. And it's a very important chapter. Biotechnology and genetics are very crucial because they contain a lot of, you know, uh, you can say the marks from your NEET exam. Okay. So biotechnology and applications, basically it's a second chapter of the biotechnology unit in which we will discuss about what the app, you know, uh, in previous chapter that is biotechnology, we were able to discuss about uh, what are the recombinant DNA technologies we had, how can we, you know, uh, insert a vector DNA into the, uh, you can say the host DNA, how can we make a recombinant DNA? We had discussed human genome project and all. In this chapter, what we dis what we will discuss about what is the application of that biotechnology. Hi, Tara. Okay. 
Sir, please speak in English. In Bang. Oh, I'm so sorry, Tara. I cannot speak in Bengali. Uh, I can only speak in English and Hindi. I'm so sorry about it. Hi, Swarna. Okay. So yeah. So biotechnology and its application basically implies to the application of biotechnological researches and discoveries. Okay, uh, for the human mankind, for our benefit, whatever we will, you know, uh, like whatever we will discover through biotechnology, we'll apply so that we can be well fed. So beginning with the chapter and guys, let me familiarize with you. Uh, I am Pratyaksh Rastogi, okay? I am the bio, bio faculty at Altademy. Okay, so starting with the introduction. So basically the applications of biotechnology, they are, you know, in every field as of now. Either when we are manufacturing therapeutics, that is medicines, or we are, you know, we are doing any kind of diagnostic that is test performed, you know, biotechnology is participating in everything. Either if we are, you know, producing any genetically modified crops for agriculture, that is, you know, because previously what, you know, what used to be happened is in our crops, in our fields, there would be so many pests, there would be so many insect, there would be so many rodents, you know, which used to kill the crops, harm the crops or infect the crops. But right now, because of the biotechnological researches and advancements, we are able to actually, you know, uh, like make our crops healthy and pest resistant, right? So biotechnology is a boom in that area. Then we have processed food, yes. With the help of some genetically modified microbes and everything, we are also able to modify our food as well. Bioremediation, waste treatment and energy production. So these all are the areas through in which we are excelling with the help of biotechnology. Okay, moving ahead. Okay, so guys, this is a telegram. Uh, you can say the QR code. You can just scan this QR code and you can just, you know, uh, join our telegram channel right now. Over our Telegram channel, every information related to the plans, relation related to the videos, what, what will be posted, every study material will be provided to you. So you can join it right now. Okay. The name of the channel, the ID is Alt Neat. So you can just go and join the channel. Okay. Okay. Moving on. We have three critical research areas of biotechnology are. So the three crit critical research areas are providing the best catalyst in the form of improved organism, usually a microbe or pure enzyme. So with the help of uh, biotechnology, we are actually able to, you know, catalyze the reactions. Reactions mean biochemical reactions. Okay. Whatever is going on, we are able to catalyze them with the help of genetic modifications. Okay. Like recombinant technologies. Second, we have, okay. Again, guys, this is a YouTube channel. We also have a YouTube channel called Alt Neat, Alt Academy Neat. You can just search on YouTube and you can join our channel because whatever videos we are preparing for you, whatever webinars we are organizing, these all will be posted on the YouTube channel itself. Okay. So you can just go and do that. Okay. You can subscribe our channels and hit the like button also. Hit the bell icon so that you will be, you know, uh, like you will be notified with each and every video posted. Okay, next the uh, usage of biotechnology is to create optimal conditions through engineering for a catalyst to catalyst to act. Okay, so in biotechnology, it is very important whatever catalyzed, cat you know, catalyst we are using, we have to provide the optimal conditions like optimum pH, optimum temperature. Okay, everything we have to provide to that catalyst in order to, uh, you know, uh, like carry out that chemical reaction. Then we have downstream processing technologies to purify protein and organic compounds okay like in biotechnology in order to create a you know recombinant uh, modi or a genetically modified organism what we have to do is we have to you know make that in or sorry organically okay organically means that organism has to be pure those genes have to be pure in order to uh, you know uh, in order to be put into the host dna okay Okay, next will be biotech. Okay, now this is the main concept. This is the main topic. So I selected two topics for you. The first is applications of biotechnology in agriculture. And second will be applications of biotechnology in your medicine that is pharmaceuticals. So first we'll talk about agricultural advancement. So in agriculture, there are three ways through which our fruit production can be increased. Okay, when green revolution came into action, we had used a lot of fertilizers, we had used a lot of agrochemical, uh, you know, agrochemicals, we had used manures, we had used 
different different techniques in order to increase our crop yielding right so right now also we have three important the first will be agrochemicals okay second will be okay before going ahead guys okay so basically this is our course look like okay for the altered me so we have 90 plus classes for you students okay because you can see biology consists of 38 chapters itself when we are including 11th and 12th together right so those 38 chapters will at least take more than 100 classes for you all so we are organizing those classes for you so that we can provide the full syllabus and the detailed syllabus to you all okay the detailed webinars to you next we have convenient educational platform yes it's very easy nowadays to just join youtube channel all you need is the internet access and the link right third will be syllabus from je and neat experts so yes right now every you know teacher every faculty is a professional in their field and they are whatever they are teaching to you they are excel in those fields okay so don't ever think that you are not able to get something if you are confused in anything you can simply just get connected with us okay through our youtube channels through our telegram through our whatsapp and you can get your doubts resolved okay then we have doubt solving practice so i already told you okay you can just be connected through to, to us through our portals okay or through the uh, through our mentors then okay the second uh, you know the biotechnological uh, which is important for a, for an you know high yielding in agriculture is organic agriculture means no use of chemicals or fertilizers it will be all organic we will only use you know like you can say <clears throat> crop friendly things which will not affect the crop at all okay so organic agriculture in in which we will use manures and bio fertilizers okay so you you, you can use cow dung in order to produce organically a crop then the third we have genetically engineered crop based agriculture so this one guys we are talking we are going to talk in detail and this is the one actually through which we can produce a very you know you can say a good uh, quality crop okay these days and we are we can uh, grow our crops in high number so we are what we are doing is we are uh, basically adapting genetically engineered crops these days okay what we will discuss about it what is genetically engineered crop okay so the first is the green revolution succeeded in tripling the food supply absolutely like i said we had used uh, pesticides insecticides rodenticides we used uh, weedicides we used uh, chemicals we used fertilizers everything so that our crop production could uh, you know increase in number and yes it happened actually but yet it was not enough to satisfy the food demands of the growing population in india and all over the world so what happened afterwards is increased yields has have partly been due to the improved crop varieties but mainly due to use of better management practices you can absolutely increase your crop production but in uh, you know side by side you also have to manage you know you also have to manage like how you will be able to how will you go to uh, you know you can say the grow a crop okay so however for farmers in the developing world agrochemicals are often too expensive there are agrochemicals available in the markets but still it's very they are very expensive farmers are you know they are not able to afford those so what we are adapting these days is genetically modified crops okay we'll discuss about them later in the section okay i can see one viewer has joined in okay so can you please uh, type hi and your name so that i can also interact with you okay so Usage of genetically modified crops is a solution through which crop yields can be increased to a remarkable amount and use of pesticides can also be decreased. Yes, you would agree with me that once we are going to use the, you know, genetically modified crops, we do not use, we do not need to use any other, uh, you can say, fertilizer, manure or anything, okay? Everything will be done by the genes itself, okay? By the genetics itself, by the biotechnological advancements itself okay okay next we have plants bacteria fungi and animals whose genes have been altered by manipulation are called genetically modified organisms so this is what i was talking about what is a genetically modified crop or an organism in which you know basically whose genes have been manipulated or altered okay when we are creating any change in the gene for example i am a plant okay <clears throat> and 
there is some defect in me okay there is some defect in the plant through which the plant is not able to grow completely and which is uh, ultimately affecting the crop production so what i will do i will take some genes out of the plant i will uh, you know alter that gene uh, you know the gene record i will recombine i'll make a recombinant dna or a recombinant gene and then i will you know put that gene back into the plant so that it will make several copies itself so that the plant can be healthier and crop production can finally be increased okay so this whatever alteration whatever manipulation i am doing in a crop or any other organism that is called a genetically modified organism okay i hope it's clear to you this can come into the form of a question into your neat exam so just mark mark this down next we have genetically modified plants have been useful in many ways genetic modification has made crops more tolerant to abiotic stresses yes why we are doing these genetic modifications why we are doing these biotechnological modifications just because the plant will have a capability to tolerate the extreme st stresses for example sometimes there is a drought and the plant ultimately dies because of lack of water sometimes there is a hypersalinity in the soil you know due to that increased amount of salt in the soil the plant ultimately dies because of the high amount of minerals right also we have different different kind of you know abiotic stresses so plant ultimately will be able to tolerate those stresses that you know that we can do with the help of biotechnological manipulation okay next we have reduced reliance on chemical pesticide absolutely when we will use biotechnological modification when we will use genetically modified crops we will not be used uh, we will not be using any uh, you know pesticide insecticide or denticide anything okay they will take care of themselves with the help of the modified gene then third is help to reduce post harvest losses right so you know what after the harvesting there are many losses for example when we are talking about wheat okay so out of for example we are taking <clears throat> you know 100% of the wheat out of those that 100% at least like 20 to 30% was always a waste because of the uh, infections created into that so with the help of these biotechnological modifications we can decrease that amount to either 5 1 to 5% okay so this can uh, basically what we are doing is we are reducing post harvest losses okay next we have increased efficiency of mineral usage by plants this prevents early exhaustion of fertility of soil absolutely like one, you know if a plant will have more efficiency in order to absorb water and minerals from the soil with the help of xylem elements so yes the plant will live longer right so how can we uh, you know increase the efficiency of xylem and phloem elements once we will genetically modify that crop right you can also give the you know the different different kind of you can say uh, you know the molecules like you can give calcium potassium you can give uh, you know phosphorus you can give nitrogen you can give any other kind of chemical but they will help to some extent but when we are manipulating it genetically so it means that uh, the genes will get recombined there will be a recombinant gene formation and that will you know uh, you know automatically perform every task okay so through that we can produce healthier and a high amount of crop production then enhanced nutrition value of food absolutely we will get a you know good uh, quality of food good quality of rice rice good quality of wheat and everything so for example golden rice is rich in vitamin vitamin a okay vitamin a ki deficiency se kya hota hai kaun batayega night blindness right so we have a night blindness deficiency uh, night blindness caused due to vitamin a deficiency so in order to uh, prevent that deficiency we have these genetically modified crops okay through which we can have additional nutrients in addition to these uses genetically modified has been used genetic modification has been used to create tailor made plants what are tailor made plants can anybody tell what are tailor made plants see guys tailor made plants means something which we are creating right tailor means something which we are creating which we are synthesizing so tailor made plants means those plants which we are producing which we are manipulating for our own benefit okay 
for example i am i am uh, you know manipulating or i am uh, you know <clears throat> changing the genes of one plant so that i can have some benefit from that plant in the form of some products for example if i need more rubber from the tree so i will uh, manipulate the genes such that the genes the plants will create more rubber the plant will create more latex the plant will create more medicinal uh, properties right so those are called tailor made plants similarly you can see in the example in starch fuels and pharmaceuticals in order to get starch in order to get fuels in order to get pharmaceuticals that is medicinal purposes we are what we are doing is we are genetically modifying those crops okay next we have tailor made okay so i had already explained to you what is tailor made the use of biotechnology has been efficiently done in order to create pesticides pest resistant plants so that the use of pesticide can be decreased yes okay so basically the main ambition is to make a healthier crop and to increase the crop production how can we make the crop healthier once we will make that crop pest resistant or insect resistant or weed resistant anything okay like plant will stay healthy plant will not get any disease plant will not get any infection plant will stay healthy so what we can do is we can genetically modify that crop or that plant okay next is i will also tell what is the process through which we can genetically modify a plant but for now just capture what i am trying to teach you guys okay now okay let me give you one example there is a bt toxin which is produced by a bacterium it's a bacteria the name of the bacteria is bacillus thuringiensis okay that bacillus thuringiensis bt produces a toxin a toxic a, you know uh, so basically it should harm the other organisms right bt for short bt toxin gene has been cloned from the bacteria now in biotechnology what we do is we extract that toxin from that bacteria and we <clears throat> we actually clone that bacteria we basically form the colonies of the bacteria and what we are doing is basically we are uh, you know injecting those those genes of the bacteria into the other plants so that the other plants can also have the resistant properties the uh, bt toxin uh, available into them right so examples of bt uh, toxin uh, you know genetically modified plants are bt cotton bt corn rice tomato potato and soya bean okay and even more than other crop more other crops also we have so bt cotton now what happens let me just explain you the whole process some strains of bacillus thuringiensis that means some <clears throat> some bacterias they are extracted and they actually produce a protein that protein is called as an insecticidal protein okay the name of the protein is insecticidal protein okay now actually what happens now there are you know many kind of you can say uh, the insects which can harm actually a plant okay for example we have lepidopterans that is tobacco bud budworm armyworm we have coleopterans we have dipterans so these all can actually harm plant they can they can all feed on the plants and uh, you know decrease the efficiency for the growth of the plant so in order to prevent that what we have is we have a bacteria which is called bacillus thuringiensis that produces a toxin which is called bt toxin and it also forms proteins crystals okay the bacteria itself forms some crystals which are proteinaceous in nature and these crystals crystals they contain a toxin which is called insecticidal protein okay this is what i tried to explain in the previous slide so what happens now the bt toxin protein exists as inactive protoxins absolutely <clears throat> okay the insecticidal protein which i'm talking about which is produced by the bt you know the bt bacterium so basically uh, those toxins they are inactive okay they are inactive protoxins now how they will get activated once they once any insect or any pest will in, you know infect the plant so you know once they will try to eat the plant you know the toxin or the protein will get inside their gut okay their elementary canal and what will happen after that that pro that uh, you know the proactive toxin that uh you know the inactive form of the toxin will convert into active form because of the alkaline ph of the gut okay i hope you all know that the ph of the gut is always alkaline 
you know if, uh, when uh, you know when we talk about human body or an, or an, uh, you know any other organism so uh, you know due to the alkaline ph uh, the crystals are solubilized okay so basically the now the crystals will come into action the toxin will come into action and at last what will happen is that toxin will harm the mid, mid gut of that insect what is a mid gut i'll explain it later but right now you would have a question in your mind if bt that is bacillus thuringiensis it produces a bt toxin then why that toxin does not harm the you know <clears throat> does not harm the, harm the bacteria itself because that toxin remains in inactive form in the bacteria okay and once something is inactive it is not producing causing any action okay so next we have x i try to explain you what is the action of that bt toxin okay basically it harms the midgut of the uh, the insect how it binds to the midgut epithelial cells and create pores that cause cell swelling and lysis so you can imagine in yourself if there is some you know infection to your gut to your alimentary canal like uh, you know basically what happens the the you know the toxin it creates pores in the midgut midgut is something which starts from the later part of the duodenum to the transverse colon okay in the large intestine so that will be you know that will be harmed there there will be pore formation into that midgut and due to those pore formation the the you know you can say the physiology will get disturbed due to which there will be cell swelling that is inflammation will be there and at last there will be death of the cell that is lysis okay so if there if you can see if the alimentary canal is disturbed if the physiology is totally uh, you know disturbed by through the action of this toxin through this insecticidal protein that at last the insect will not be able to survive and it will lead to the death of the insect so this is how the mechanism of the uh, you know the bacillus thuringiensis toxin is over the insect okay that's why it is always preferred you know in biotechnology that to uh, you know to infect a plant with this toxin so that the plant will have this the, the copies of this toxin and the plant will fight against the uh, insect is you know the insects and the pest what are available in the crops okay next we have the foregut okay so this is what i tried to explain you there are three kinds of there are three portions in which the gut the alimentary canal is divided first is the foregut so foregut is from your oral cavity to your initial part of duodenum Duodenum is a part of your small intestine. I hope you all know that. Okay. Then we have midgut. So the uh, you know the Bacillus thuringiensis toxin actually infect the midgut. Okay. Midgut starts from later part of sorry later part of duodenum to later part of duodenum to your a transverse colon okay transverse colon you can you can just tell me that colon has three or four parts that is ascending colon transverse colon descending colon and sigmoid colon so transverse colon we have okay and then we have hindgut okay or hindgut whatever you may call it as so it will start from one third later one third of the transverse colon later one third of the transverse colon to what to the upper portion of the anus okay that is the end part of your elementary canal so this is how our gut is divided into foregut midgut and hindgut so you can see that the midgut in in a, in an insect is actually affected by that uh, you can see the bacterial toxin and in this midgut there is a pore formation through which the cell lysis occur and the death of the insect takes place okay that's why the we can say that these plants are insect resistant or pest resistant specific bt toxin genes were isolated from bacillus thuringiensis and incorporated into several crop plants such as cotton okay now there are no, there is not only a one bt toxin but there are many bt toxin genes which are available these days into the laboratories for the uh, scientist 
to incorporate and to you know uh, basically make the different different kind of plants insect and pest resistant okay such as we have bt cotton so you can see guys this is the this is the infected cotton okay this was infected by the insect and the whole cotton got eaten up or infected okay or damaged whereas this is the healthy cotton in this healthy cotton we have bt toxin available okay and due to this bt toxin it is a pest resistant property okay insect and pest resistant property okay so basically in this insecticidal protein is available okay in active form i told you the protein is available in inactive form but when it reaches the gut so due to the alkaline ph of the elementary canal it becomes active okay so insecticidal protein is available in active form okay i hope this is clear to you next let us uh, let's talk about the choice of genes depend on upon the crop and the targeted pest yes yeah now there are different different pest also we have we have ball worms okay we have uh, you can say the you know different different kind of uh, you can say the insects okay ball you have ball worms you have uh, you know uh, <clears throat> okay different different beetles you have okay other you have mosquitoes mos you know house flies these all are the insects which can actually harm and eat your crops so you can see the choice of genes depend upon the crop and the targeted pest as most bt toxins are insect group specific the toxin is coded by a gene cry okay so this is the basically the toxin which encode which is encoded by a gene okay so cry is the name of the toxin and this you know actually there are different different kind of toxins available for different plants for example you can see that cry 1 ac and cry 2 ab they control the cotton boll worms okay whereas the cry 1 ab control corn borer okay so this you have to remember this is important i saw a question came into the neat exam from this concept okay you can uh, simply say cry is what a gene encoding what encoding a toxin okay now there are different different toxins for example cry 1 ab cry 1 ac cry 2 ab cry 1 ab okay different different and so on so now let's talk about pest resistant plants so several nematodes parasitize a wide variety of plants and including human beings now there are several nematodes can you just name a one nematode which can actually infect human beings as well can you just drop a message in the chat box okay let me explain you so a nematode for example if i would say okay a nematode uh, which actually you know you can say you know which infect so it will be you can say any uh, tape worm tape worm is a part of platyhelminthes you can take uh, you can take any round worm like bucheria bancrofti they you know what it causes it causes your elephantiasis uh, disease so these are all nematodes they actually create diseases in human beings plants and other organisms as well okay so how can we resist our plants so that they can be prevented from these nematode infections what we do what we do is we again use biotechnological researches and advancements we use biotechnological applications we modify the crops uh, genetically so that they can be resistant to these nematodes okay a nematode which which has a name of me melodigen incognitia it infects the roots of the tobacco plants okay and it causes a great reduction in yield absolutely there is a nematode and nematode is disease causing infection causing so the name of the nematode is meloidigyne incognitia and the tobacco plant for example these are the roots these are the roots okay and these are this part is getting affected by this meloidigyne incognitia okay mi 
and this is actually creating an infection or a disease in that plant so that these uh, you know the tobacco plant there is a decrease in the production or the yield of this plant okay next we have a novel strategy was adopted to prevent this infection infestation which was based on the process of rna interference now this is again an interesting topic guys we will discuss about what is rna interference okay r n a i that is r n a interference okay so now this is the process this is a biotechnological process through which what we can do is technological process through which what we can do is we can make a plant pest resistant okay pest is what nematode and we have to uh, you know induce the resistance in the plant against this nematode how will we do that rna interference is a process in which rna molecules are involved in sequence specific suppression of gene expression by double stranded rna through translation or transcriptional repres repression let me give you a overview what is this rna i rna interference is all about what we do is <coughs> okay there are rna molecules okay we can say double stranded rna this double stranded rna is actually responsible for the suppression of messenger rna of that of the nematode okay now there is a double stranded rna which is produced biotechnologically and this double stranded rna is actually suppressing the actions of the messenger rna produced by the nematode like translation and transcription processes are hampered and you can easily you know you can easily calculate or conclude that once the translation and transcriptional uh, processes are hampered they are stopped it means the the plant will not have a capability to uh, make the dna copies okay to make to grow further okay so these are stopped okay so just remember this in rna interference we have a double stranded dna that double stranded dna is actually acting upon the messenger rna sorry double stranded rna is act, acting upon the uh, you know messenger rna of the nematode infecting agent or the pest and that is actually stopping or blocking the transcriptional and translational processes okay. uh, i have got i've gotten a message from mhf uh, i don't know what are you talking about can you just explain in detail if you have any question okay this method involves this method involves silencing of specific mrna due to complementary dsr ds rna molecule that binds to and prevents translation of mrna now this process whatever stopping blocking whatever i am talking about that is called as silencing okay and what kind of silencing it is mrna silencing okay silencing means we are doing we are making someone silent it means we are making a messenger rna of that nematode silent so that they will not work further they will not infect the plant further now how, now let us discuss this process in further more detail so what has happened the source of this complementary rna could be from an infection by viruses having rna genomes or mobile genetic elements transposons that replicate via an rna intermediate so guys in order to create this double stranded rna first we need to create a, a, a rna molecule and how we are going to do that we are basically going to infect the plant with some virus okay because virus act as vector you know a vectors and vector can some vector is something which can actually transfer useful genes from them to the host dna okay to the host organism and after that once the vector has done their work the mrna will you know get into the the dna will get into the organism and it will create two types of rna okay the first will be sense rna sense strand of rna second will be anti sense strand of rna okay sense strand of rna will be the one which will participate in translation whereas anti sense rna will not participate in, sorry 
anti sense translation will act in participation i'm sorry about it whereas sense tran sense uh, you know rna will not take participation in your translatory process okay so the dna which we have injected through the vector into the host organism that dna is going to produce two strands of rna sense and anti sense strand now what will happen further now we have gotten two strands so they will recombine together because they are complementary to each other one is sense and one is anti sense so being complementary rnas to one another they will re they will they will combine and form double stranded rna okay let me just tell dna then dna will con will form sense and anti sense strands of rna now being complementary to each other being complementary to each other they will form double stranded d sorry d s r n a d stands for double s for stranded and r n Okay, ribonucleic acid. So, using agrobacterium vectors. Now, what are the vectors? What we are using is these vectors, agrobacterium vectors. These vectors are actually, you know, uh, like you can see the carrying those DNA molecules into that host organism. So, these agrobacterium vectors, they are nematode-specific genes per produced into the host plants. The introduction of DNA was such that it produced both sense and antisense RNA in the host cells. That's what I try to explain you. Okay, DNA will produce sense and anti sense RNA. These two RNA they are complementary to each other and they will form double stranded RNA, which will initiate your RNA interference because double stranded RNA will be the ultimate one which will actually act upon the messenger RNA of the nematode and then it will stop the transcriptional and translational processes so that there will be no gene copying, there will be no duplication of the genes and the plant will remain safe from the infection okay so this is all about your rnai i hope this is clear to you if it's, if it's still you have any kind of confusion drop your query in the chat box at any time okay i will go through that next we have okay so so you so you can see these are the two images over here so the first crop is nematode infected okay this is nematode infected crop in which the roots are infected and they have been totally destroyed whereas this is a healthy plant why this is a healthy root because it is actually carrying that double stranded rna and it will act upon that messenger rna of the nematode so messenger so nematode will not be able to infect it furthermore okay Next we have the consequence was that the parasite could not survive in a transgenic host expressing specific interfering RNA. The transgenic plant therefore got itself protected from the transgenic plant means genetically modified in simple words if I would say or call. Okay? Genetically modified which plant? Tobacco plant because whatever we are doing that is we are doing it in tobacco plant. Okay. Now we, I have been done with biotechnological applications in agriculture. Now let's discuss about biotechnological applications in medicine. Okay. So in medicine, basically we are, you know, manipulating some technologies. We are putting some biotechnological uh, advancement or researches in order to produce good and efficient pharmaceuticals. Okay. The recombinant DNA technological processes have made immense impact in the area of healthcare by enabling mass production of safe and more effective therapeutic drugs okay whatever drugs we are producing whatever medicines we are producing they are safe to the body they are not interfering with the physiological process they are not affecting your physiological process be it circulation digestion you know excretion locomotion anything they are not affecting they are user friendly they are safe okay then further the recombinant therapeutics do not induce unwanted immunological response as is common in case of similar products isolated from non-human resources okay then next we have at present about 30 recombinant therapeutics have been approved for human use the world war uh, 
over the world war in india 12 of these are presently so guys this just remember this we have at present 30 recombinant therapeutics okay 30 recombinants therapeutics maybe there would be more as of now but you know as per ncert information there is 30 recombinant therapeutics available all over world it's a it's a worldwide stata okay whereas in india we would say so in india we only have 12 recombinant therapeutics you can say drugs okay so genetically engineered insulin okay so, so the first topic in modification in uh, medicines we have insulin genetically engineered insulin so guys uh, i hope you would have seen lot of uh, people lot of patients lot of relate you know you would have relatives you would have your parents you know sometimes you would have your uh, siblings anyone you know anyone can these days be infected uh, uh, sorry be suffering with diabetes mellitus there are two types of diabetes diabetes insipidus diabetes mellitus diabetes insipidus is whole lot of different topic do not get confused diabetes insipidus is related to your antidiuretic hormone but when we talk about diabetes mellitus it is related to the production of insulin into your body and the glucose uptake by your blood by your cells so genetically engineered means for example if someone is suffering from diabetes and someone is not able to efficiently use insulin into their body it means they they need insulin from the external sources from outside of the from outside environment how will they get it okay we cannot we cannot be like we can kill an animal and we can get insulin from them and we can put into our bodies no there has to be a medicine there has to be a way through which we can have the insulin in, into our body but how which animal are we going to manipulate which uh, thing are we going to manipulate in order to get insulin from an external source so you can see okay so you can see what is insulin is used for diabetes was earlier extracted from pancreas of slaughtered cattle and pigs so whatever uh, in earlier times whatever cattle and pigs were present we used to basically slaughter them and we used to get insulin from their pancreas but nowadays what is happening is okay now what was the adverse effect of those uh, slaughtered you know the <clears throat> insulin what we used to get from those pigs and uh, animals like you know absolutely along with the insulin we can get some other cells also they, those cells can create allergies those cells can create different types of adverse uh, reactions into the body right so which can harm the body of an individual so we stop this method and then what we are doing is insulin which is consisting of two short polypeptide chains now in insulin what is the basic structure of an insulin is insulin is a mature insulin i'm talking about so mature insulin consists of two chains those chains are polypeptide it means proteinaceous in nature okay and they are linked together by disulfide bonds okay and we are naming it as chain a and chain b in mammals including human insulin is synthesized as a pro hormone pro hormone means that it needs to be processed before it becomes a fully mature and functional hormone okay so pro hormones means you can again say the immature type of hormone which needs some changes to be done in order to make it mature so insulin uh, is synthesized into the body of an individual as a pro hormone and over a period of time when maturity arrives then pro hormone becomes a mature a fully mature insulin hormone so basically it can it consist the pro hormone consists of an extra stretch called c peptide so we have over here let me draw for example this is one chain chain a this is a polypeptide chain chain a and in insulin in pro hormonic uh, insulin that is immature insulin we will have an extra stretch okay this will be an extra stretch this is called c peptide and after that we will again have uh, another you can say another polypeptide chain which will be called as chain b okay so this will be the this will be the structure of your immature insulin what i'm talking about immature is it is a pro hormone okay it needs some change in order to become a fully mature hormone so you can see the diagram over here the green well, green part is chain a blue part is chain b and this is the free peptide 
chain C. Okay, so this is your pro hormone insulin. Next to that, we have the C peptide is not present in the mature insulin and is removed during maturation in insulin. The main challenge for production of insulin is RDNA recombinant techniques where insulin is assembled into mature form. Now we have to make this insulin mature. So what we will do is we have to uh, basically extract the C uh, chain from the insulin. And how can we do that? We will create recombinant. We will use recombinant DNA technologies. Okay, Subh Shubham uh, has sent me a message. Yes, sir. Hi, Shubham. So, okay. I hope you are enjoying the session. Yeah. So, in order to make the insulin mature, what we will do is we will use recombinant DNA technologies. What we will do is now there was a company called Ellie Lilly, and it's one. It was an American company. It prepared two D DNA sequences corresponding to A and B. Chain A and chain B of the insulin. So this company created. Sir, a doubt here. Yes, please. You can ask a doubt, Shivam. Okay. So this company had created a similar polypeptide chains as of as that of chain A and B. And then what did did is they introduced them into plasmids of E. coli. E. coli is a bacteria, and every bacteria has a plasmid which uh, imparts a special phenotypic character. For example. Uh, resistance to antibiotics, resistance to uh, you know any infection and all. Okay, so they uh, basically you know uh, had those polypeptide chains into that uh, plasmid of the E. coli, and then the chains were produced separately and then extracted by some uh, techniques. You can uh, I told you it was gel electrophoresis. So similarly, they extracted these chains and they combined by creating disulfide bonds to form human insulin. So nothing, it's not a complicated process. What they did is they took the immature insulin. They, you know, basically produced the, you know, similar polypeptide chains as that of chain A and B. And then they, uh, you know, basically introduced those chains into E. coli. So that in E. coli, those chains, uh, you know, they become mature and and you know formed chain a and b and that chain a and b they were extracted and then they were combined by disulfide bonds to form human insulin okay next we have gene therapy in gene therapy we are manipulating or changing the gene sequence so that we can actually uh, you know you can you can see prevent the gene defects okay now Correction of any genetic defect involves delivery of a normal gene into the individual or embryo to take over the function. So what, what are we doing in gene therapy is we are actually, you know, injecting or introducing a healthy gene into the unhealthy organism or the so that that healthy gene will create the copies and the organism will become healthy and the defect will overcome. Okay. So the first clinical gene therapy was given in 1992 to a four year old uh, girl and that girl had a you know basically a problem of adenosine deaminase ADA deficiency. Now what this absolutely if this is deaminase, ACE is nothing but an enzyme right. So this enzyme was crucial for the immune function to work properly but since the deficiency was there so immune function was also hampered okay. It was also not working properly. So basically what happened, the gene therapy was done. Okay. The healthy gene from an individual was, you know, introduced into this girl so that the, you know, the adenosine DMINAs were produced and immune suppression was overcome. Okay. But there is one thing over here. You need to remember that that individual has to go for gene therapy over a, over every period of time. Because, you know, at some point of time, that gene will also, uh, you know, decrease that their effect. Okay. Next, we have molecular diagnosis. In molecular diagnosis, what we have is, we are treating a gene, we are early diagnosing the things. Okay. For example, <clears throat> a disease shows symptoms. And prior to those symptoms, there are many changes which are going on into the body of the organism. So we have to overcome those changes. We have to diagnose those changes, those problems so that we can early detect it and we can, uh, you know, overcome the disease in the early stage itself. So how can we do that? There are two steps. First is PCR. Second is LSR. 
PCR is what polymerase chain reaction and ELISA is enzyme linked immunosorbent assay. ELISA is concerned with your antigen, antigen antibody reactions. That is, for example, for every antigen, our body creates antibodies. Okay. So, for example, in order to uh, correct, you know, autoimmune disorders, this ELISA test can be functioned or for example, if any virus, any bacteria, any pathogen has attacked, so our body creates antibodies against that. So once we will perform ELISA test, we will be able to identify the antibodies and we will be able to check whether our body is infected with that uh, antigen or not. If our body will be infected, we will be basically, uh, you know, use medicines and other therapeutics uh, to correct that disease right there and then, right? So ELISA is also used for the detection of your HIV. Okay, HIV is what? Human immunodeficiency virus, right? So if someone has been infected with HIV, we can easily uh, detect the HIV infection by LSA test and then we can take action and uh, you, we can, you know, um, over, we cannot cure HIV infection, but yes, we can save that person from getting AIDS infection, okay? Similarly, PCR polymerase chain reaction is a type of, for example, if you have heard in Corona test, what we are doing is RT-PCR, right? So in our polymerase chain reaction, we are creating a lot number of uh, a, a full colony of the gene. We are copying the gene so that we can take a small amount of the gene and we can test the gene in order to test if there is any, uh, you can say any infection present in the body. If there is any infection, we will treat that individual with therapeutics. Okay. So this was about the molecular diagnosis. So guys, this was all about today's session and I hope you were able to get something out of biotechnological applications in agriculture and medicine. If you like my video, just, just hit the like button. And Shubham, you said that you have a doubt. So if you have any doubt, please post uh, your query in the chat box. I will be glad to answer your question. So guys, this is our QR code for the Telegram channel. You can just join it. The name of the channel is Alt Neat. YouTube's name, YouTube channel's name is Altademy Neat. Okay. And our website is altademy.online. Okay. Altademy.com. You can just visit uh, and you can just go through the plans, the subscription plans and all. And you can make up your mind to join and, you know, so that we can have a better journey for NEET and JE examination. Thank you so much guys. It was nice taking the session with you all. It was very interactive. I got so many messages from you and I will just take the other session and you will be getting all the updates over our Telegram and YouTube channels. So stay tuned and thank you so much for joining my session. Okay. Have a good day. Bye-bye.